Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Global Imaging Ambassador. I'd like to take the opportunity to talk to you about APS-C. Now, APS-C uh, often is referred to as a crop sensor, and we'd find those in the A6000, 6300, 6500 cameras. But I really want to talk to you about the APS-C mode on the full frame cameras. Now, if we go into the menus on a full frame camera, you will see this listed on the very first page. It's referred to as APS-C, also Super 35. Now, it's often referred to as Super 35 by movie makers, but we'll be looking at it for capturing stills in this tutorial. Okay, so if we take a look at the uh, the physical size of the surface area of APS-C, you can see it's much, much smaller than full frame. And one of the advantages of our full frame camera is that large surface area of the sensor. Okay, so if we take a look at um, why the, that menu item for APS-C exists on our full frame sensors, one of the reasons is uh, if we purchase a cropped um, um, lens, i.e. a lens designed for the crop sensors, um, these uh, lenses don't have a covering circle that would fill or cover our full frame sensors. So the cameras really have to automatically drop into APS-C mode so we don't get that huge tunnel vision or vignetting happening. And so typically what we'll find is that um, APS-C mode is going to kick in automatically if we try and mount one of these cropped uh, lenses. Okay, so um, let's take a look at um, what happens when we use um, the APS-C mode when we're using a full frame lens. We're actually going to get a 1.5 crop factor or magnification factor. And so I'd like to illustrate how that uh, is going to play out if we do that. Now, um, this is an illustration to show you that if we drop into that APS-C mode, all of that surface area around that orange uh, indicator there are not going to be recorded. Uh, basically, it's going to be discarded uh, while we're writing the file uh, to the memory card. So we're only going to get uh, what appears in the center of that APS-C area. Now, this does give us a, a crop factor. It basically makes our lenses look as if they're longer telephoto lenses than they actually are. Uh, we're going to get that 1.5 magnification factor. So so a 200 mil lens uh, behaves as if, as if it's a 300 millimeter equivalent. Okay, it doesn't actually change the focal length of the lens. It just gives us that visual appearance that the field of view or angle of view is narrower, and therefore we do get that magnification factor. It's not all um, roses though. Uh, if we are going to use that uh, crop factor, we, it does result in smaller files, i.e. less megapixels. Now we can do the maths on this and uh, some people actually do the maths incorrectly. They just divide by 1.5 uh, and you actually need, uh, with surface area, you need to divide by 1.5 twice. So we actually drop from uh, 24 megapixels to 10.66. Okay, and uh, if we're using one of the um, the higher resolution sensors, the 42.4 megapixel sensors, we're going to drop to 18.84 megapixels. Now, um, is that loss in megapixels um, uh, too much? Okay, so well, I want to show you the impact on our file sizes if we do uh, shoot in APS-C mode. Okay, uh, let's put this in perspective. Um, the highest resolution images we tend to look at on a day-to-day -day basis, we observe on a 4K Ultra HD monitor. Now, these have pixel dimensions of 3,840 pixels wide by 2,160 pixels high. Effectively, that is an 8.3 megapixel file. Now, it doesn't really matter if we show a 42.4 megapixel file on that 4K monitor, it's not going to appear any sharper because uh, we're looking at the, uh, the limitations of that resolution of the monitor itself. So remember, uh, when we're shooting in APS-C mode on the 24 megapixel sensors, we're actually recording 10.66 megapixels. So that is still more than enough pixels to get a really sharp image on an Ultra HD 4K monitor.
Uh, let's take a look at some of these uh, cropped uh, files uh, in Lightroom. Now this was um, shot in APS-C mode um, using the Sony A9. We can look at the resolution at the top uh, left hand corner there I've got the information highlighted it's 3936 pixels wide now that is the 10.66 uh, megapixels that we looked at earlier now if I do crop that um, to the aspect ratio of a uh, TV or a 4, 4K monitor, we are going to crop into that 16.9 aspect ratio. It's um, a slightly um, uh, narrower than the uh, the 2.3 or 3.2 format that we're actually capturing in on our uh, image sensors, and so that will further drop the megapixels to 8.7. Just getting closer to that 8.3. Now, just to show you um, how that plays out, if we're actually creating uh, 4K files to fill completely fill a monitor, uh, we're actually um, we, you can see from this uh, crop here, we don't actually have a lot of wiggle room uh, left if we're shooting in APS-C mode on a on a 24 megapixel sensor. In this uh, particular instance, I've just got enough to straighten the slightly crooked file, um, so it is getting a little bit tight if we want to display four. 4K files in APS-C mode on those 24 megapixel sensors. Now, if I'm shooting in APS-C mode on one of the R cameras, the uh, the uh, the 7R, uh, the R2, the R3 cameras, you can see that uh, we have plenty of megapixels. Uh, we're actually shooting, um, and we've still got a, a, a width on that uh, resolution of over 5,000 pixels. So if we had to crop from one of these, uh, we've got a lot more room. Uh, we've got uh, basically 18.84 megapixels, and remember we only need 8.3 for that 4K monitor. So it's not so tight when we need to crop. We've got plenty of space um, um, to discard pixels if we require. We can effectively discard more than half the pixels and still have enough resolution to fill that 4K monitor. And to show how that plays out, this was actually shot in full frame mode, not in APS-C mode. And you can see the size of that Dalmatian dog running uh, towards the camera there. This is 42.4 megapixels. And if I was to crop uh, to 4K uh, on that full resolution file, you can see how much I can discard from that file and still create that beautifully sharp image on a 4K monitor. And that is one of the real advantages of these higher resolution cameras. Uh, I often don't print very large, but it gives me this huge ability uh, to crop very aggressively in post-production. So let's take a look at um, a 4K crop um, from a 24 megapixel uh, image. We're not um, cropping in camera not now, we're not using APS-C mode. And so if we are doing a 4K crop from a 24 megapixel sensor, you can see it's very comfortable. We can um, discard a lot of pixels and still have resolution to spare. Okay, so, and again, um, that uh, plays out and we get that beautifully sharp image. I would possibly, because we're looking at um, now um, in a subject matter that's moving very rapidly, I probably would advise you not to shoot in APS-C mode if your subject matter is moving rapidly and you're having to pan. This is one of the beauty of having such a high resolution sensor is we can crop tight in post-production. And you can see, um, uh, even though I'm having a little uh, trouble tracking this motorcycle as it rounds the uh, bend at a 150 kilometers per hour I can keep it in the viewfinder and if I can keep it in the viewfinder I can uh, create this beautifully tight crop in post-production and that is the 4k crop from that file so if we go back to um, that rodeo shot uh, you can see um, this is a much tighter crop here now we can see that we don't have that um, luxury of being able to crop aggressively in this instance, however, um, I did uh, use APS-C mode for a very good reason. Um, the camera is not having to pan. The action is coming towards the camera. And so uh, I am quite confident that I can creep, uh, keep all of the action inside of the viewfinder.
and I don't need to crop in post. I'm basically cropping in camera. So what are the advantages of uh, doing this um, in camera rather than in post? OK, so the advantages of shooting in APS-C mode, I'm going to list them now. Extended capture time in continuous shooting. Now, because the files are less than half the size, we're effectively increasing the buffer capacity. So we can shoot for more than twice as long before the camera slows down. And this is one of the main reasons I was doing that at the rodeo um, shoot there. Um, I, I was restricted with less than 90 shots in the buffer. And some of these scenes were playing out longer um, than the camera's buffer. And so basically by cropping in camera, I can shoot uh, several hundred shots in continuous shooting mode before the camera starts slowing down. And so that's a very good reason to shoot in APS-C mode. More files can be saved to the memory card, so I can shoot for much longer uh, without having to change the memory card. Uh, more files can be saved to the hard drive. If you're effectively cropping the vast majority of the images from a shoot, uh, basically you're filling up your external drive or your RAID system prematurely. You can basically put two or three times more images shot in APS-C mode onto that same hard drive before it is full. Um, one of the other reasons that I will often shoot in APS-C mode is simply because the subject appears larger in the frame. And this helps me maybe at a, um, a, a football stadium to work out uh, who has actually got the ball and who I should actually be panning with in order to follow that action. If I physically can't get closer to the subject, then it seems to make sense to uh, um, put the camera into crop mode. And uh, Sony's new FE400 G Master lens uh, actually allows you to um, turn a, a, a ring on the lens itself to automatically go into APS-C mode. For instances where the, the play on the, um, the stadium field is actually on the other side and you just basically need to zoom in without changing um, the lens because obviously with a 400 prime there is no ability to zoom further. So let's uh, look at the actual physical mechanics of setting that up on the camera. If we go into the menu on the back of the camera, uh, you'll see this on the first page there. I've listed it as page one in the first camera menu. If you press the uh, center button in the wheel, uh, that will uh, enter into that option. Now the first option is set to auto. Now this is set to auto for a very good reason, so that if we do um, attach a, a crop um, or a lens design for a crop sensor on the camera, we're not going to get that vignetting or shading. Now the second option um, for to go to switch into manual on off, okay, isn't going to um, do anything unless we first take that first option out of auto. And this does catch a few people out and I've seen it on the forums. People are switching the second option between on and off and not seeing any visual difference. They're not getting that crop factor. So the first thing we have to do is um, take the, um, the APS-C shooting out of auto and put it into manual. The next thing we can do is go down into that manual setting and either switch it off or on. And as soon as we switch it on, we are going to get that 1.5 magnification factor. Now, um, uh, if you want to access this quickly, say we're at um, we're going to be doing this for sports. Uh, it does make sense to um, uh, set either a custom key or a function menu setting so we can access a little bit more quickly than having to go into the menus. So if you want to set it to a custom key, uh, you'll come over to the second camera menu on the later model Alpha cameras and then come right back to one of the last pages here. It's on page 8 on this particular Alpha camera and go into your custom key settings there. Uh, I would um, recommend that you assign it to a button that you're not going to knock accidentally very easily. And so that could be, uh, say, the custom button 3 or custom button 4. Uh, something that's uh, well away um, from uh, your thumb, basically, so that you don't knock it accidentally. And then you can just simply assign it there. Now, I would warn you, um, there is very little indication in either the viewfinder or on the LCD monitor 
when you are actually shooting in crop mode or APS-C mode, uh, there is the icon. And if you're not shooting with all information displayed, you're not going to get any indication at all that you're actually shooting in APS-C mode. This uh, does run the risk of you coming back uh, from a day of shooting thinking you've got 24 megapixel files and half of your files are actually only 10 megapixels. So just a word of warning there. If this is uh, something that you don't want to risk, then I possibly would assign APS-C mode to the function menu to uh, force this as a two-step process. First, you've got to go into the FN menu, and then you've got to switch it on. So if you are going to assign it to the function menu, just um, uh, we'll go into the menus again. Okay, so here is a little indication. You can actually um, uh, roll um, uh, between APS-C mode. You don't have to press the center button on the back of that wheel. You can simply press one of the, um, the dials at the top of the camera, uh, the forward dial by default usually, and you can just roll it uh, left or right and, and cycle between uh, APS-C mode on and APS-C mode off. If you are going to assign that to a function key, just go into the uh, second camera menu there. Um, again, come back to the eighth page, uh, roll down to function menu settings, and then you can assign that to your favorite uh, position in the function menu. So if you're, if you're hunting for that option, uh, just remember it's very, very near the top. Uh, that little white line on the right-hand side of that long linear list of options that you can put into the function menu uh, gives you an indication of where you are in that menu because they're not arranged alphabetically. So just remember, I think it's fifth or sixth from the top, you're going to be able to find your APS-C 35 option there. If you find this information useful, just remember you can head over to my website, markgaylor.com. I've got loads of information that you can download here. I've got ebooks, I've got links to all of my movies, I've got resources for Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop as well. Okay, and if you do find some of the information useful, you'll help me out by making a small donation. Okay, thanks.